exception. Uh, it got my attention, but it sure identifies the fact that uh, the revolution is alive and well, even up north here. Wonderful. A few weeks ago, they told me there'd be a nice crowd here, and I said, well, don't over-predict, you know, but it looks like they under-predicted. This is fantastic. Thank you very much for coming. You know, the country uh, and the world is in a mess today, and uh, I'm quite convinced that uh, we know exactly how we got here, and we know exactly what to do, and one thing for sure is we don't need more government. Every single day we wake up with more news. This week has certainly has been international debt crisis. And all they're proposing is uh, more bailouts. And right now, you know, they're talking about bailing out Greece through the European banking system and the European countries. But at the same time, although our leaders in the uh, Treasury as well as the, uh, as, as well as the Federal Reserve are relatively quiet, but believe me, we're going to be in hawk as well. So we have to be very alert to what's happening because there's no way you can bail out a world deeply in debt with more debt and more spending. It makes no sense. This week, unfortunately, we had a historic event occur early in the week. Our national debt, which went over five, $15 trillion, went over our GDP. It's the first time in the history of our whole country. But it's not only our country that's facing this. The world has a GDP of $195 trillion. And guess what? Their, uh, their deficit this year is the same amount. So this is absolutely unsustainable, and uh, we have to recognize this. It's been going on for a long time. I had talked about this for many years and anticipated that we would end up with a worldwide crisis like this, but I got energized, you know, in the early 1970s, realizing that uh, our change in monetary policy would lead to this. And this is the reason that I talk a whole lot about reining in, auditing, and eventually getting rid of the Federal Reserve System. When, when a Federal Reserve System comes into being and promises to be the lender of last resort, they usually are the last resort, and it'll be the last thing we do. But the, the real evil here, and in, in 1971, we severed the last link of our dollar to gold, which ushered in this new age that we've had since 1971, and that meant that the politicians could spend money without any responsibility. They could tax, but there wouldn't be enough. They could borrow, but that would never be enough. Then they resorted to inflation. Now, the collapse didn't come in the 1970s, although it was a rocky period of time, but it ushered in this age where there's endless spending. Conservatives and liberals said deficits don't matter. Deficits do matter. They matter to you as an individual. They matter to us as a country. They matter to the whole world. But we ushered in this age where we depended on the Fed just to create the money when we had to uh, pay, pay the bills. Now, when the country is very wealthy, they can do that for a while. But then eventually they have to uh, borrow a lot more money and live beyond our means. Up, during, the, uh, during the Great Depression, we were a creditor nation. Now, since the 1970s, we've been a great debtor nation. We are the biggest debtor nation in the history of the world. We owe over $3 trillion to foreigners. And uh, they think we're going to bail out everybody else. It, it makes absolutely no sense. It's the Federal Reserve that by interfering in the monetary system, monkeying around with interest rates, they create the bubbles. And for a while, they can create one bubble and patch it up again, but eventually the big bubble bursts. And this is what we're witnessing right now. We're witnessing the end of an economic era. This is a tremendous opportunity for us who believe in liberty to get our message out. It is well known by all those who are pretending to patch this network and financial system together again. They know what we know. They know it's unsustainable, it's not a viable system. 
And they are making plans. They are making plans, and they are not too secretive about it. They're talking about a worldwide fiat currency. Instead of the dollar standard, they want to... They want to use the United Nations and the IMF and whatever. But you know, we ought to stay old fashioned. We ought to believe in national sovereignty and that we deal with our own problems and not world government. This, this whole idea about uh, depending on sovereignty, of course the most sovereign part of government should be us over sovereignty of our own lives. That's where the, it should originate. And then it should be with our families and friends, our neighbors, our communities, and our local governments. But obviously, we've had too much drift toward Washington. Our federal government is way too big. Our Constitution, the people have failed the Constitution in a sense. The Constitution was written not to restrain you in any way, but to restrain the federal government. Now our big concern is going even one step further with one world government. Just take a look at what's happened in our foreign policy. Do we go to war with a declaration of war anymore? No. Our presidents go to NATO and the United States and they take our money and our kids and fight these endless wars that make no sense, that contribute significantly to our bankruptcy. It's time to end those wars and bring our troops home. spending $10 billion a month fighting these wars. We've been in Afghanistan 10 years. There's a claim that we're coming home from, uh, from Iraq. We're not coming home. They're just taking, uh, taking some troops out and hiring uh, contractors who are going to get paid twice as much as the military was paid. But we have bases in 130 some countries, 900 bases. We have these drone stations throughout the world and we just bomb at will. And then they, we wonder, our people wonder, why do they get annoyed with us? Every once in a while we miss our target and we have, oh, that's collateral damage, don't worry about it. But they, this type of a foreign policy where we think we have to be everything to everybody, tell everybody else what to do, decide everybody else's border, get into nation building, spread our goodness and our great democracy, People don't like that, and it's bankrupting us. Is it time to change our foreign policy? And sometimes it, it amazes me how long the system lasts. There's a lot of momentum uh, to a free society. The wealth is gone, our, our liberties are being undermined, and it is coming to an end, but I'm amazed it's lasted this long. But take, take for example, the ineptness of what they did when, when we invaded Iraq. They said, well, we have to influence the dissidents. There's some people over there that might not like us being in our country, so we need to go over there with a lot of cash because American cash uh, still, still had some value. They packed up car loads of this, plane loads of cash to the tune of $60 billion. And guess what? They can't even account for it. It is utterly amazing that that the system tolerates this and that we who run a program like that are going to bail, bail out the world. Our national debt now is equal, you know, to our, uh, our, our GDP and uh, as well as in the world. So this, this cannot be sustainable. We have to decide what we want. This, this gives us an opportunity to decide what the role of government ought to be. The founders made that decision. They said the, the role of government ought to be very limited. What we should do is emphasize personal liberty. Leave the responsibility on the individual to take care of his and her own life. There's two basic principles on a, in a free society. One is that you and I, nor our government, shall be allowed to use force to tell other people how to run their life. It's not much more complicated than that. And one of the, 
One of the reasons why there's a lot of resistance to this, that uh, if we release this control over people and telling what they can eat, drink, and smoke, and how they run their uh, habits and what, what they do, they say, well, they might do something that is unappealing to others and that we have to protect them from themselves. But you know what? Once government embarks on protecting us from ourselves, there's very little liberty left. That means that when the individual acts in a certain way, whether it's religious values, intellectual values, or personal habits, that those of us who disagree have to be tolerant of it. But what happens, though, is that individuals who resent this and want to tell everybody else what to do, they, they are intolerant to what other people think say, and think and do because they think that if you legalize something, if they legalize your choice to run your own life, that means we endorse what you do. But that isn't the way it is. You don't have to. We don't endorse what people do in religious values at all. Uh, but we want it to be legal intellectually. We want people to be allowed to read and study what they want. We have to combat bad ideas with good ideas. But when it comes to the government telling us what we do with our own bodies, all of a sudden, the government, uh, a bunch of uh, do-gooders in Washington, want to tell us exactly what we should do. Now, because of that attitude, it has done something terrible to our, uh, our society here at home. Of course, it's, uh, we're strongly opposed to all these wars overseas and the mentality that goes with the wars, uh, because along with the wars overseas comes with this fear-mongering that, oh, un and under times of war, we have to really bear down on the civil liberties here at home, so we have to pass things like the Patriot Act. We don't need the Patriot Act. What we need to do is repeal the Patriot Act. That's what we need to do. But there's another war that goes on here on our personal liberty. It has something to do with personal habits. And many times these personal habits aren't all that wonderful. But the war on drugs for the past 40 years has consumed over a trillion dollars. It has accomplished nothing as far as containing the unwise use of drugs. And what it has done is undermine our liberties. I believe it's time not only to stop the wars overseas, but stop the wars on drugs here at home. we have embarked on this uh, attempt to legislate morality, we as a country that has 1%, uh, 5% uh, of the whole population, we have 1% uh, of our people are, are in prison. We have more prisoners than anybody else. We have 50,000 SWAT type of no-knock break-ins in our country every year. And these are illegal because they don't have the proper authority. They do not have true search warrants when they come in and they break in. The other day there was a case where uh, there was a veteran, a Marine, that he was in this house with his family. He heard some banging and breaking in his front door. He hid his wife and daughter in a cupboard. He went out, he grabbed his gun and walked out there. And as he approached the door, um, he had, uh, I think there were 72 shots fired by the SWAT team, 28 of them went into his body. He never pulled, he, he never took his safety off his gun, never shot one bullet. And now, why, what, what is going on here? We have so little respect for the rule of law, whether it's domestically or internationally. We have become known as a country that endorses, uh, endorses torture, that we, we, uh, we do not pay much attention to habeas corpus. We have secret prisons around the world. And if you suggest, well, that's not good and that's not legal, they say, well, they're very bad people. 